you can hear me fantastic okay hello everyone I hope you're having a good afternoon so I'm waiting to see the well the ABC when they release you know when Andrews comes online we'll switch over and have a look to him but what I have received beforehand is well a amendment document that looks like it's uh, from cabinet and shows us what businesses are getting shut down and impacted in Victoria so I thought it'd be worth having a look through this before ABC goes live and then we'll jump over there so this is uh, under stage four stay-at-home restrictions the default is that workplaces in metropolitan Brisbane are closed unless the workplace is part of a permitted business is set up below all Victorians are required to work from home except where this is not practical Andrews like to, likes to keep everyone waiting, Tony saying. Yeah, you're right, mate. You're right. He does. That's it. Thanks for joining in. Guys, I hope you're all having a good day. Oh, I need my, my afternoon stein of coffee. So, I mean, we're going to skip everything and go right to the one that interests me the most, <laughs> construction. Okay, we'll go to construction first. So, here we go. Under construction... And this is closed for on-site work. Closed for on-site work, and we'll go to construction because I'm in. It's my game, guys, and a lot of you are in the construction game as well. So residential building yet to commence. It's all closed. So if you've got your home builder and it hasn't commenced, uh, it's it's closed, guys. It's closed. Now I'm I'm seeing. Ah, uh, it's all good. It's all good. Non-residential building, including retail construction that's non-critical, is now all closed in Victoria. Heavy and civil engineering construction, non-critical, is now all closed. Construction services. Now, MI construction services are architects and engineers construction services. I sent this to a, to a client. He sent back asking about architects and engineers. Perhaps that's us. That's us there. What do we have? Open for on-site work. Tony reckons it's coming to New South Wales, perhaps, and and Brisbane. So residential building construction. Are they about to go live? Nope. Residential building construction that has already commenced or is ready or is required for safety. Okay, we're going to jump over here to to have a look at Andrews. So he's walking up here. And coronavirus restrictions we are standing by can you hear the uh, and we'll take you live to victoria now can you hear the tv guys let let me know let me know as we just said 429 new cases let's hear from premier daniel andrews it's in victoria in a cumulative sense that's 429 since we last updated you uh, 416 Victorians are in hospital and 35 of those are in intensive care. I'm very sad to have to report that the total death toll as a result of this pandemic is now 136. That is 13 more Victorians who have passed, a, passed away because of coronavirus. I'll give you as much detail as I can. Uh, one man in his 60s, two men and a woman in their 70s, two men in their 80s, uh, five women and two men in their 90s. Eight of those 13 I think you're right there, Rex. are linked to aged care. We've done 1,676,953 tests, uh, approximately 25,000 yesterday. Uh, we're prioritising positive cases, so getting you a total number of negatives uh, will be probably a day or so behind, but it is in the order the labs confirmed for us of around 25,000 tests yesterday. Can I... Uh, obviously send my best wishes and my sympathies uh, and my condolences to each of the families who have lost a loved one since we last briefed you. Uh, this will be an incredibly difficult time for them uh, and every Victorian is with them. The uh, regional metro split in terms of active cases. There are 6,489 active cases across the state, just under 400, so 386 cases that are confirmed in regional Victoria uh, obviously, uh, as more and more data comes in, as more and more of those cases under investigation are confirmed, then uh, chains of transmission and being able to attribute those to a given setting, uh, those numbers always trail. 
uh, but that is, again, further growth of cases in regional Victoria, which I think confirms the decisions that we made yesterday. Uh, now, given that we are undertaking an exercise that has never been done before, and there is no playbook, no handbook for a global pandemic of this nature, uh, yesterday we made some announcements. Today we'll be able to make some further announcements, uh, but there will be progressive uh, announcements made over the next few days to give people the clarity and the certainty that they need. Uh, no, whenever you draw a line or whenever you write a list, there will never be complete certainty and clarity about every single item on that list or there will always be anomalies of people that are on different sides of any line that you, that you draw. Uh, you've got a detailed document in front of you that's a long form list of the decisions that have been made. Uh, this list has been uh, the product of a lot of hard work from a lot of people together with uh, an important process of engagement with the Commonwealth Government and already to this point, but by no means complete, engagement with given industries and sectors. What I want to try and do today is speak as much about why we're doing this as what we are doing, but to take you through the three different categories of workplaces. Yesterday, as I said, was about how we live our lives, so how far we can go from home, the reasons we can leave home, uh, the curfew. Uh, today is about workplaces and as heartbreaking as it is to close down places of employment and whilst I never thought that uh, I would be telling people not to go to work, uh, that is what we have to do in order to stop the spread of this wildly infectious virus, this deadly virus. This six week period is absolutely critical. We have got to make decisions, uh, very difficult decisions, but we've got to err on the side of doing everything we possibly can to drive these case numbers down so that at the end of that six week period we're not having to contemplate what further steps we might have to take. Uh, it is most uncertain about what... What further steps they might have to take, guys? What further steps? Yeah, the, the mortality rate, I mean, they, they've gone down the rabbit hole. They, they've, they've, they've gone down the rabbit hole. They have to go strict because then they can't say, oh, we made a mistake, we have to... You know, we have to pull back or... or... Or any fact checking, if you like, for things you're going to publish in papers tomorrow or graphics you're going to put up on the TV. We will do everything we possibly can to support you in that. And what's more, uh, if there's a need for separate briefings to take people through lots of intricate, quite detailed questions, we are, we're more than happy to set those up. They can be I don't know. Hungry? That's one, briefing that one for us all to consider. Done. So, in essence, there are three groups. The first group are those businesses that will remain open and will not be affected. They've already stepped up and are already looking very different to what they ever have in terms of distancing and things of that nature. But this is a really critical list uh, for every Victorian to understand and appreciate. Uh, these restrictions apply uh, in the main in metropolitan Melbourne. There are a couple of examples. So you can read everything I'm about to say to be about Metro Melbourne. Uh, except I'll point you out a couple of examples where it needs to be statewide. But the group of businesses that will not, ch not close, will not change, they will not be modified, uh, supermarkets, grocery stores, bottle shops, pharmacies, petrol stations, banks, news agencies, post offices. Do news agencies still exist? Guys, are they still are there any around? Bottle O's, bottle O's. Here's the question, how many people die from alcohol-related illnesses? They're not freaking out about that, are they? Therese, uh, I, understand that, I understand that there is a sense of concern in the community and uh, hopefully the clarity of the message today, you do not need to do that because supermarkets, as well as grocery stores, uh, the local fruit and veg, the local butcher, the baker, all of those shops, they will remain open. And whilst you'll only be able to go to the, those that are closest to you and you'll only be able to be one person out of the house doing that for an hour, they will still be open and they will have, one to the best of everyone's ability, they will have the fullest range that they possibly can have. So there's no need for people to be going and literally buying months worth of uh, groceries. Those settings will not close. We are in deep conversation with uh, Coles, Woolworths, Audi, uh, IGA, all of those uh, companies, uh, we speak with them frequently uh, so that we've got a complete understanding of any of the decisions we make and what the impact would be 
at that checkout in terms of what it would practically mean for people who are shopping. And we're confident with them remaining open and some of the other decisions we've made, uh, we can still have everything that people need. Whether every single item that you might normally buy will be on the shelves, I can't guarantee that. Uh, but why, why doesn't this have anything to do with the, what he's saying, the, the text here? Okay. Sense of uh, panic is simply misplaced. We don't need to do that. That's my reassurance. That's not just from me, but that's from those who run our big supermarkets as well as many other smaller stores. In terms of the second list, which is industries, there's you've got a long form list and I don't propose to read through that from start to finish. But there are a number of other industries and sectors that will need to close uh, for that six week period. Uh, th these decisions apply from midnight this coming Wednesday. So we still have time, both the rest of today and people so will be working few days well into the working. night, continuing to work through some of the finer details, consulting, discussing, properly understanding from industry what each of these decisions might mean. And, and, and things may change in very fine detail. That's the imperfect nature of this process. Uh, whether we, whether she we can't like wear a mask, mate, because it's uh, the for, facial so expressions are part of it too. This Wednesday, uh, retail will close, some manufacturing will close, some admin will close. Uh, these businesses, uh, unless they have specific requirements to safely shut down on a slightly longer timeline, they will have to close by 11.59 on Wednesday night. To give you the retail example, for instance, Bunnings, Bunnings will be, uh, you will no longer be able to go into a Bunnings store, but you will be able to, uh, you'll be able to collect goods without making contact with anybody. So some of those drive-through arrangements Similar arrangements for, uh, for uh, uh, couriering things to you, so the home uh, delivery model will be able to continue uh, in a number of different retail sites, but retail will look very different than it has ever looked. And that's critically important to have many, many people at home rather than at work and moving to and from work each and every day. Here's the, the, the statement I just want to make there, guys. Do you think this is going to manifest in changes to our retail environment? how these businesses, I get the feeling they're all taking advantage of this to find ways to reduce costs. You know, Woolies has, you, you can go completely contactless shopping now. The banks are closing branches. You're going to get drop and collect and, and delivering from home. You know, it's going to be cost saving. Garant I bet you, I bet you. Poultry or beef, uh, they will move to 70, to, sorry, they will move to two thirds uh, production. So they will reduce their production by one third. Uh, and those workplaces will look very different. There will be uh, some of the most stringent safety protocols that have ever been put in place in any industrial setting. Uh, those workers will be essentially dressed as if they were a health worker. Uh, gloves and gowns, masks and shields. They'll be working in one workplace only. They will be temperature checked. They will be tested. Uh, it is a, a proportionate response to the risks that that industry poses. But given the critical uh, part in uh, keeping Victorians fed and indeed the nation fed, uh, given that so much activity hubs out of Victoria, particularly given the uh, drought and other challenges in other parts of the country, uh, it is not possible to go below that uh, two thirds level. So cutting production by a third, we still believe that people will be able to have access to the products they need. I, again, I can't guarantee that every single product at exactly the volumes that you might like to buy will be there, but there will be, an up, there'll be enough uh, for, for people to get what they need. Not necessarily what they want, but get what they need. Those changes <laughs> will come into effect what? together with a couple of other examples. What you, not what you want, what you need, plebs. What you need. Shops remain open. Boning rooms remain open, abattoirs remain open, meat processing centres remain open. They'll be open at a lower level, but in, after deep consultation with industry, we still believe, given that this is for many uh, a lower, uh, a, a less busy time than it would otherwise be, uh, if we were in a few months on right into spring, then that would be a very different set of circumstances. Uh, I can't guarantee that everybody will get every product they want in the quantities they'd want, but everything you need will be there. And there is no need to be doing anything else other than buying the things that you need when you need them and, of course, following the rules as you do so. In terms of other sectors that will scale back but not fully close, uh, construction, which in many respects is the lifeblood 
of the Victorian, um, the Victorian economy. Uh, if I can divide that sector into three parts, uh, uh, very large scale major projects that the government is involved in, they've already been reduced in terms of workforce in a global sense uh, by about half. We will continue project by project to look at ways we can further reduce the number of staff whilst doing so safely and whilst, for instance, allowing us to reopen train lines that are currently closed because we're removing level crossings. That's a logical way to go. In terms of very large commercial building, whether it be uh, building apartments in the city uh, or building uh, factories or warehouses or uh, some of those sorts of non-residential non building projects, if it's above three storeys, uh, then uh, those builders will need to reduce their workforce down to the, minim the practical minimum but they can have no more than 25% of their workforce. 25%? Working. In terms of the third What's this category going to do for building, unemployment? which is uh, domestic homes. Well, I'm not worried about that. Uh, no one cares about that, that anymore. That sector can, can obviously stay open, as the other two can as well, but there will be no, it will be, it will be unlawful uh, to have any more than five people on site at any one time. That means, essentially, for some of these industries, we are moving them to a pilot light phase they're not being turned off completely, but they are dramatically reducing the number of people that they have working for them and their output over these next six weeks. Uh, that is a very, a very difficult decision to make, a very challenging decision to make, and I know that there will be substantial pain that comes from that. But unless we have literally hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people at home and not going to work, so hundreds of thousands less movements around the community each and every day, then we will not pull this virus up. We will not see those numbers reduce. Along all, throughout all of this, we have tried to be as logical as possible, to understand quite intricate and detailed supply chains, and to be aware of all the consequences of each of the decisions that we make. The reason there There'll is be unintended, time, quant today unintended we're consequences. things that don't come into effect until midnight Wednesday. Today we're announcing things that won't be fully implemented until the end of uh, midnight Friday. To go alongside particularly that second category, whether it be construction, meat processing uh, uh, or, or, or other scale back industries, there will be COVID safe plans for all workplaces and particularly those uh, that are at a higher risk. It'll involve things like testing and temperature checking, some of the PPE issues that I talked about, particularly in the meat industry. All of that will be challenging. All of that will be very difficult, but it is what is necessary. These are the decisions that I've made because they are the decisions that will keep us safe. And I think you're right, Ben. They are going to go crazy. They're going to be locked in at home for so six weeks. At the end of six weeks, Shit. we have every chance of having got this back under control uh, and we're not having to then countenance even further action the damage from which uh, would be uh, altogether, uh, well, it would be in another category. It would go even beyond this, because it wouldn't just be changing how the economy works, it would be very much changing the way that we live our lives even further. What about Sweden? We don't want to get to that point. We want this strategy <laughs> to work, and to do that, we've got We're to make need tough more decisions, schnapps. but we've also got yep. to appeal Here to all are. Victorians to work with us to make these decisions work, to make this strategy work. And that means compliance, uh, it means doing the right thing, it means playing your part, and it means making the best of very bad circumstances, making the best of really challenging circumstances. Now, everything I've announced relates to metropolitan Melbourne with the exception of abattoirs. Uh, those rules, so two thirds production, PPE, much like a health setting, as well as temperature checking and stopping uh, workers working at multiple sites, all of that, that will apply at each of those important facilities right across the state. We can't have a situation where such a high risk environment is operating under two different sets no of rules insect burgers. Uh, in two different parts of, the, parts of the state. That will only contribute to further outbreaks uh, and would only mean we were moving the problem from where it currently is into communities where it hasn't been yet. Now, in terms of uh, support for business, and then we're happy, I might ask Brett actually just to add to my comments, and then we're happy to take any questions you have. Uh, we know and understand that uh, whether it be in regional Victoria going into stage three from midnight Wednesday, uh, or the other announcements I've made today as reflected in the long list that you've been given, uh, there will be very significant pain. 
uh, I can announce today that all of those businesses that are forced to close, uh, so restaurants, cafes, beauty, gyms, all of those in regional Victoria as part of the imposition of Stage 3 will be eligible for a $5,000 grant think from our right. government. And we will, People will lap uh, this do up, our guys. Best, our very best to get those paid as quickly as we possibly can. They'll Same criteria as applied last time. Uh, where we had the best part of uh, $850, $900 million worth of those payments were made out uh, at another, another point. In terms of Metropolitan Melbourne and Mitchell Shire, you would, you would be aware that we're currently in the process of paying out literally thousands of $5,000 grants. Uh, I can announce today that we will add a further $5,000 to those grants, acknowledging that they will have been under these restrictions now for uh, a period significantly longer than the first six weeks as foreshadowed. So that will mean uh, paying 10, out your 000, money, everyone. Uh, paying out uh, your money. And indeed, for those metropolitan businesses, it will finish up being, in aggregate terms, first and second wave payments in the order of $20,000, together with a number of other waivers of taxes and charges. Uh, and indeed, for some businesses, indeed many businesses, uh, all of those uh, really significant payroll tax refunds, uh, where we were able to return to those businesses monies, uh, three quarterly payments. Uh, that they had made to us uh, prior to the first wave. That package is in the order of about $600 million. Uh, we'll have more to say about business support, we'll have more to say about our work with the Commonwealth in due course. Just, uh, just before I do ask Brett to, uh, to, to say a few words, can I uh, just confirm for everybody that I've had a couple of uh, very good discussions with the Prime Minister today. Uh, we are working very closely together. Uh, I'm very grateful to his officials, uh, whether it be at an industry level uh, or in terms of the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet, his public health team as well. Uh, we're all working together to make sure that these very difficult decisions are made as best they can be. Uh, there will be questions, there will be uh, anomalies, there will be things that we need to uh, tidy up and, and deal with over the coming days. That is the nature of such significant choices, really, really difficult choices, and in many respects, uh, something that is completely unique. That's why we've got that lead in time, and it's why there are literally dozens and dozens of people speaking to people. That's a good question, Dale. Why we did the first lockdown when we've got this now? No, I, I, I honestly think this is the first wave that we're experiencing now. There is no alternative but to get tested if you have even the mildest of symptoms. There is no alternative but to stay at home if you are waiting for a test result or if you uh, have the virus uh, and have been told to stay at home. That's absolutely critical. Uh, every Victorian is making enormous sacrifices. I'm so proud and grateful of all, of all those Victorians who are doing the right thing. To those who aren't, you've just got to make better choices. Uh, and I'll have more to say tomorrow about significant boosts in penalties, significant <sighs> boosts in enforcement. Shit. Uh, and again, I'm very grateful to the Prime Minister for his a significant that boost have, to penalties uh, because tomorrow. Because tomorrow's announcements around some of those issues will involve further ADF, further important support uh, for us to get this job done. These are not easy decisions. This is not. This is a very tough day, uh, and there are many more of those to come before we get to the other we side. We don't need. Um, but these are the decisions. We that don't have need to be made. That's why We've got Victoria, guys. Uh, we have a plan. We have a clear strategy. It'll only work though if everybody plays their part. Uh, and I'm deeply grateful to every Victorian who is. Uh, I'll now ask the Chief Health Officer to add to my <coughs> comments and then, of course, we're happy to take any questions you, that you have. Oh, well, let's Thank have a look what he has to say, guys. What do you reckon? These are indeed um, very substantial restrictions that will be coming into force. Uh, we should reflect on the fact that stage three restrictions did make a difference. They genuinely flattened the curve, but they flattened the curve to a point where we got to a plateau, a plateau of four or five hundred cases every day. That would have continued indefinitely uh, because if you're uh, really only driving transmission down to a level where one person infects one other individual, then you've got four or five hundred cases every day ongoing. It may even have been just above one or just below one. What, what's uh, going to stop this? Way, uh, that means you've got hundreds of cases going into next month and the month after and the month after. <coughs> These restrictions are very substantial uh, and I expect, absolutely expect, uh, that we'll see transmission driven down and, and cases to decrease over time. We don't see it in the numbers instantaneously. We'll, we'll see the effect of universal mask wearing uh, in the numbers in the week ahead and ongoing. 
we'll see the effect of these restrictions uh, in the following week. Uh, but they will be ongoing and they will continue right through the six week period where we'll see a reduction in numbers week on week uh, as long as people are following the directions that have been laid out. Um, obviously, uh, there are some constraints that have been uh, in stasis. Set in they don't know that. Don't, don't, they don't will make up make those ideas. Because there are uh, literally limited opportunities to transmit the virus in the workplace. Uh, in other indoor settings as people go about their essential business uh, and even in the uh, additional um, limitations in, in who will visit your household. So they're all um, downward pressures on transmission of this virus uh, very broadly across society uh, and so we can expect that numbers will improve week on week uh, but they will improve to the extent that we follow uh, the advice, uh, because it's not just the opportunities for transmission, it's also what uh, a potentially infected individual does. So isolating right from the beginning of having symptoms, getting that test uh, and having those close contacts quarantine are also really critical elements that we'll need to uh, keep on right through this period. Uh, but um, there is an absolute expectation that uh, this will do the right thing. Uh, and will drive numbers down as people uh, follow the directions. Thank you. Happy to take any questions you have. Around 250,000. So just to put that into some context, and this speaks directly to why these changes are so important. We estimate we've got about 500,000 people who are working from home. Uh, we know that there's about a quarter of a million people that have been stood down in one form or another, and this will add a further 250,000 uh, in, in rough numbers. Uh, we'll get a, a clearer sense of that as the week, week unfolds. But that is essentially a million workers who are not travelling to and from work every day. When you add in a million students uh, together with teachers and staff, that's when you are radically, dramatically changing the number of people moving around the community and therefore the number of points at which the the virus can be transmitted from one person to another. And again, it directly relates to those mystery cases, those community transmission cases where for the, we just can't determine where the person got it. It's and because the virus is out there in the community. Uh, I've had a conversation, as I said, a number of conversations, in fact, with the Prime Minister, job Bugger. keeper and job seeker, uh, and some other arrangements, particularly for those who are in insecure work. Uh, I look forward to the Prime Minister making some further announcements, particularly in relation to that last category of worker. Uh, but a uh, job keeper and job seeker are at the higher level, the higher rate, uh, until uh, well into September, so well past this six week window. Uh, and I'll continue my discussions around cash flow support, business support, other things we can do in partnership. The Prime Minister has sought from me a commitment uh, that we will, it'll be a joint effort. And, and I've given him that commitment, and I make that commitment to every single Victorian. Uh, that we will work together in partnership with the Commonwealth to look after those who need to be looked after, to support those who need support, and then uh, to, be, to, 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 getting, to get right into that rebuilding work uh, that will be necessary once we get to the other side of this. What impact will this have on the economy? Well, this will have a very significant impact, but until we uh, fix the health problem, until we get these case numbers down to a much, much lower level, then we simply cannot open the economy up again. So there is significant damage that needs to be done here, but there is no choice. But to do that damage, to fix the health problem, and then be able to move then to rebuilding the economy. Now we know that there'll be, that damage is not just in dollars and cents, uh, that damage will present in lots of different ways. And that's in why lives. throughout this week, I'll have more to say in around lives. support for those who are living with family violence, those who have got significant uh, mental health uh, issues and those who are experiencing anxiety and depression and, and many of the, many of the uh, attendant challenges uh, of this really difficult set of Damn. circumstances. We'll have Damn. more to say about those measures uh, throughout the course of this week. But can you even... Do you, can you even people who have lost their jobs or are about to lose their jobs as a result of this decision? Oh, sorry. I didn't what get the first part. What do you have to say part. to people who have lost their jobs or are about to lose their jobs as a result? Well, these, these are heartbreaking decisions, but there is simply no choice. The advice from our medical experts is that this is the only way to get these numbers under uh, control, to drive them down low enough so that we can open up again. The alternative uh, is a six-month strategy, not a six-week strategy, uh, and then even at that point, significant doubt that that would work. 
Uh, we cannot continue to have four and five hundred cases a day uh, and so many people in hospital, so many people dying. Uh, we've got to drive these numbers down and if we continue to have uh, the sort of movement that across the community, across the economy, uh, as is uh, part of stage three, if we don't move to the further restrictions I've announced today, then we simply won't drive those numbers down. That strategy has avoided our hospitals being completely overrun and many, many thousands of cases each day. But that stability is not enough. We need to drive these numbers down and, as, uh, as uh, Professor Sutton has just indicated, instead of every positive person infecting another person, only every second or third or fourth person who gets the virus passing it on to someone else. That's what these restrictions are all about. It's heartbreaking, it's very challenging, uh, but these are the tough calls that have to be made. Otherwise, we're not in for a six week set of restrictions. Uh, we're I'm in drinking for a six coffee. strategy that I don't think will work. But you can't, you can't begin to estimate the human toll, can you, Premier? No, it's very challenging. It is very, very challenging, and no one is, no one, uh, no one enjoys. Uh, having to make these important decisions. It is heartbreaking, it is very challenging, there will be a lot of support that is required and we will be there to provide that support. Do you reckon you'll get back in guys in the next support, election? Whether it be economic and financial, whether it be care, comfort uh, and uh, the kind of welfare support that, that we need to provide. We have done that throughout. If we have to double our efforts and double them again, then we will. Uh, this is, we're all in this together and we all have to look out for each other and the government knows it's the important part that we play in that. And I'm very pleased to say that uh, there's an acknowledgement uh, that whilst this is a challenge in Victoria, it is a challenge nationally as well. And that's why the national government and our government are working so closely. We've been trimming down public transport timetable. So yesterday I made some announcements about night network that will no longer run. And uh, post curfew public transport services will be dramatically reduced. We still need to have some services there because we've got some people who are still working, whether it be in our health system or in other uh, industries, uh, uh, but it will be a it will be a significantly reduced timetable. Uh, so a number of services will be cancelled, and that's a reflection as well of having less people moving around the community. There being less demand for those. Matthew services. thinks the election uh, will be it's rigged. Also about being able to redeploy staff. No, mate, I, I think people service are just so to stupid enough. You don't need to rig it. And the enforcement of all the oh, other. They'll happily vote. There'll yesterday. be people cheering for this lockdown. Guaranteed. Are you talking about a significant civil construction? Yeah, or construction or down to a quarter of staff. What the, what's that going to do to projects? Well, what we're guys. doing, they're going back to pilot light levels of activity. Pilot light levels. They're not being turned off. Mothball. They are just much. going to be sustained uh, for that six-week period. When you think about this, and there's been a lot of a lot of consultation, a lot of work with those businesses, with unions, uh, to to properly understand this. If you were to say complete shutdown, then it might take several weeks to make a site safe, to board it up as it were. Uh, then there'd be a couple of weeks uh, when they were shut. Good point. Uh, and it's better to be just keep it going so you've got people there to, to monitor it. Back up again. Good that point. won't achieve what we need to achieve. We need to dramatically reduce the number of people that are moving in the community. We think that as a maximum, 25%, and then the safest practical number but the, see, the thing is, the virus to, will be in New South Wales, and it will come right back to Victoria we after six that weeks. Is workable. <laughs> it's not pleasant. It's no, no, no one will enjoy that. Uh, but it is doable, uh, and we think the reward for that effort, the dividend in terms of uh, dealing with the risk of Ice the spread of this virus, Ice cold is moving to that. WA. Similarly, uh, on uh, volume building, hey, so building housing's meant to be good there, the suburbs or wherever it might be. Uh, there, you know, you get more vitamin D from the sunlight. A lot of that work is indeed outdoors. Uh, but at the same time, we, it's a big part, it's, it's a very significant part of the economy and we think we can, by going down to that five people at any one time, that'll mean that the house gets built more slowly. Uh, it'll mean that the plasterers are in there but the electricians aren't, the painters are in there but the uh, you know, other, other teams of tradespeople aren't, uh, but the, it'll still be able to trickle along for this six <coughs> week period. Uh, so wherever we've been able to do that, they're the decisions we've made. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, warehouses, very large distribution centres as well, that's the other example which I think is in some of the material that you've got around scaling back. Uh, that'll mean that some parcels will arrive um, not quite as quickly as they otherwise would have but they will still get there. There's a very large degree of automation in some of these places. They are a, a riskier environment than others uh, so that, again there'll be specific, higher level, next level in many respects, unique uh, safety 
measures that are put in place in those workplaces also. Why is horse racing and greyhound racing being allowed to continue? continue Don't worry, mate. Because, I, I'll, uh, handle obviously it. I'll handle it. It's mate. a very low risk activity. What's more, there are changes though. There'll be no uh, owners, uh, there'll be no uh, media, there'll be only the broadcasters and the direct participants involved in that activity. There are some significant Lundy animal welfare issues. If you were to try to turn that industry off and take uh, those animals out of training, uh, there are some very significant animal welfare challenges there. So we found it's a compromise. Uh, I'm sure many in that industry will not be pleased uh, that, uh, that the, there's further, it's been scaled back further. Uh, but we think we've struck the right the right balance there. Are you still having tradies to your house? Are you allowed to say have a cleaner come over to your house? No. Are you allowed to... There'll be no cleaners going to your house. There'll be no one mowing your lawns. Uh, there'll be no one providing anything other <laughs> how, than how how will they survive support? without so cleaners and lawn mowers? Oh shit! They might have to do their own chores. Then yes, you can oh. have that plumber come and do that work. Uh, but it's not the time to be What's cleaning happened your house. To people it's not in the time country. to be having completely Bloody unnecessary hell. tradespeople right at this time. They're critical in terms of the economy, but the work is not necessary and urgent. It cannot happen. Now, that should not be <laughs> Steve read. Steve has a good one. I like that Meals one, on Steve. wheels, home and community care, <laughs> other, other important uh, services uh, that are very much about the person's welfare and well-being, they will be able to continue. Uh, but, of course, the, the uh, PPE protocols that are in place now obviously will... Uh, uh, they'll uh, endure there. Are you still able to leave house? If you have, uh, we're going to do some further work on this uh, because this is a question that's been raised. So uh, we've got a treatment for a number of, or sorry, we've got an approach to a number of transactions that are already in train. So the goods that are goods that are going to be delivered, things that are planned to happen. Uh, I don't want to see people not able to settle on their home. I don't want to see people who. Uh, are supposed to move from one place to another because the lease has run out, unable to do so. Uh, we're going to get some specific advice on that. We've already given it a fair bit of thought, uh, and I think the answer will be yes. If you've got a contract, if you've got an arrangement in place, uh, then we will we will allow you to fulfil that. Uh, but again, it needs to be, and this is, gets back to the it gets back to the personal choices that each of us make. Uh, there will be instances where we'll make a ruling. There'll be other instances where there'll be a bit of discretion, and people will have to make their own judgments. And I'd ask people to make the judgment that Clear best supports wants not leave spreading Victoria, this virus, blame you. not the judgment that might be convenient, but deep down you know is actually running a risk. If we all want to be past this, then we've all got to make, sadly, a very significant, uh, significant, a significant contribution uh, to this effort. You talk about um, $5,000 for some of those small businesses that are being affected. Will there be any financial assistance for, say, big warehouses, manufacturing factories and construction sites that have to scale down? Certainly don't rule out providing further support. We have, for instance, provided a mixture of different support, not, not so much stimulus, it's much more about cash flow. Uh, and they, each, of those, each of those different commitments, so whether it's waiving uh, or uh, do you or think this government taxes with handouts taxes. Will we've refunded taxes you can't uh, for some larger businesses uh, everything down to refunding liquor license payments that a number of licensed premises had already paid we have given out cash grants to businesses uh, I'm not expecting uh, you know those businesses will be bitterly disappointed to find themselves in this position as am I but we'll keep providing what we can afford to provide uh, and I wouldn't rule out providing further support in terms of cash flow support and I think the Commonwealth, our discussions with the Commonwealth will be very important there too. That ought to be and I'm confident it will be a shared effort between our government and the Commonwealth government. Uh, that'll mean we can get the most impact for uh, any additional monies beyond the announcements I've made today that we uh, commit to. Beyond that though, when it comes to stimulus uh, and, and if you like uh, making sure that these businesses have got a, an order book for the for the future well the government will have a really significant part to play in that and i'll just remind you uh, we've got hundreds and hundreds of smaller projects 2.7 billion dollars worth uh, that we committed to a couple of months ago uh, and uh, late last week i had an update on all of those and they are progressing very well uh, and there will be once we get into september there'll be op there will be op significant opportunities for businesses large and small but particularly smaller uh, businesses, trades and others, uh, to really push on with that work, uh, that'll be uh, even more important uh, than it is right now. Do well, you need to qualify for the $5,000 payment? Pardon? Do sole traders qualify for $5,000 The same payment? eligibility criteria applies uh, as had applied under our first $10,000 grants. Uh, we have, I would just point out, wow. and we have more to say about this in, in coming days, there are a number of different groups that are disproportionately negatively Im impacted and we have 
had some very targeted assistance for those, whether it be arts and entertainment, where I know there are a number of those sole traders that you uh, refer to. Uh, hospitality has been, there's been different packages within that industry, CBD for instance, uh, and then there were uh, packages for tourism operators. I don't rule out having further targeted packages of uh, cash flow uh, support. How long do you think this is going to last, guys? How many years? Beyond, beyond Premier, how much are we going through this? Do you think it'll all be gone next year? On what New Zealand did? No, this is a, this is a uniquely Australian and uh, Victorian approach. Uh, if you look at what New Zealand I, did, I don't, uh, they I can't went get grants, uh, a fair bit further than this. Uh, and I'm, I'm in Queensland anyway. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm not here to make, I'm not here to run a commentary on, on what other Paper countries or other states have done. Uh, we, we've designed something uh, that we think will work here in Victoria, given the circumstances that we face. <laughs> Two years, five uh, years, ten uh, years. We've also had some normal. really, really meaningful discussions with the Commonwealth government as well to make sure that there was nothing that we didn't have Never line of sight away. of that we needed Someone to. Saying a wall. Uh, and, and obviously, when you're talking you're about supply chains bunch. that don't just run within Victoria, they're into our region. So into Southeast Asia, the vaccine, for instance, yeah, for uh, and one. indeed supply chains that run all the way across the country. That detailed engagement with the Commonwealth was really important, and I'm deeply grateful to many, many, many officials uh, for whom the next last election. few days have been very long <laughs> days. Will you need to extend the eviction ban, next Premier? Election. Sorry? Will you need to yeah, extend the eviction got it. ban? There we go. And do you have a message for the banks? More people are going to be under mortgage stress, In, in terms of uh, the changes that we had made uh, to residential and commercial tenancies, We'll have more to say about that quite soon. Uh, in terms of the banks, uh, it's not often that you know I've I've uh, I've stood here or, or many places at all and uh, and and said uh, good things about the banks, but uh, I think that uh, many financial institutions, our banks, have stood up and have uh, by and large done very important work, very very good work to support people with it's mortgages nice. uh, whose circumstances could not have might, reasonably been foreseen uh, are not uh, <laughs> nice. are, are in oh, very not, very yeah, difficult circumstances and they've the done down. their best I think at least that's the feedback that I get they've done their very best to try and accommodate that with uh, deferrals and other things so I would I'd encourage them to keep going the way they have uh, because I think that uh, customers uh, are, uh, are obviously very grateful for that. And Premier, have you come up with a list yet of what is a priority worker in terms of childcare yeah. school? Yeah, so, oh, sorry. Childcare, in terms uh, of access. No, we'll have some more to say about that, and, and that's why... Look, in some respects you'd like to do this and you'd like to have it all come into effect immediately, but the number of unintended consequences that would come out of that means the best approach is to step this out. So, we had some things that came into force at 6pm last night and at 8pm last night, we have some things I've talked about today that'll come into effect from midnight Wednesday night and others that'll be finalised by the end of Friday. Uh, I'll have some more to say about those issues of childcare and school, but in broad terms, in broad terms, uh, only those who are still working will be able to send their kids to school. This is in metropolitan Melbourne. Send their kids to school to have them learn remotely with a teacher or staff member supervising them. Now let me explain why that is different. That is, that will mean Clear less skies. kids oh, are at school. Now the reason for that, oh, wait. and we will have more detail election. about this and give parents as much notice They'll as we can, again. and of course I the school Andrews arrangements will get don't come into effect Darren, I, I've, I've uh, put a for another couple of, couple of days. Honestly, I'm surprised he got well, in last time. What we need to do is, uh, yeah. across the board, have less people going to work, less people moving around the community. And what I can't have is to have uh, you know, more teachers, more staff, more students and parents moving around the community than is absolutely necessary. I, mean, no and I know that will be incredibly school, challenging it's just a complete joke. Uh, for a number of people who perhaps are working joke. from home, but there's simply no choice. Uh, we've all got to make a contribution to less movement rather than more, less spread of this virus rather than more, uh, and that's why we're putting some of these industries on a pilot light setting, if you like. They'll sit there uh, and be able to reboot at a, in six weeks' time. Uh, other industries are being scaled down, not quite so much because they're part of an essential food supply chain. Uh, other industries uh, are closed all, all uh, together, and that is very, very challenging. Uh, but it is, it is exactly what we need to do all the in order to drive these numbers the down. We can't Victoria. any of us you know? pretend I thought that, that might negatively, didn't affect, make tough negatively calls, affect him. If we said, look, this is too difficult, we're going to leave all these industries open, we're going to have hundreds of thousands of extra people at work as opposed to what we've announced here, that will drive these numbers down. We simply won't. They will, they will hover at 500 a day, 
the deaths will continue to go up, the number of hospitalisations will continue to go up, and at some point, no system can cope with 500 cases a day. I'm looking a bit and stressed. And it then becomes no, I'm akin all good. to having thousands of cases a day over a much shorter period. I can't complain. We cannot do a six-month strategy on this in the hope that it might work with tiny, gradual decreases each couple of days. We have to do something that I just need is shave. very painful, but will drive these numbers down and drive them down as quickly as possible. Premier, a high proportion of Victoria's cases are in industries that are going to continue to operate, albeit with restrictions. How confident are you that these measures will bring the cases down to the levels we need them to come down to? Well, we're as confident as we can be, uh, knowing that there are many variables here. Uh, but I think, Rachel, if you look at Meatworks, uh, I don't think that <coughs> anyone would ever have thought uh, that someone who's working in a meatworks on a line uh, would essentially be wearing head to toe the same gear that our hospital staff wear when they are treating COVID positive patients. That's the sort of level of PPE that we have to get to. Uh, we Bloody are reducing hell. their overall production. Imagine doing that work in a meat That is very, meat very significant. Uh, if we don't see compliance, if we don't see people in that industry doing the right thing, well, I'll have no choice but to go further. Slaughterhouse sleeping. But in the, in the discussions we've had, and there have been many, uh, we think that we, we, we have a strong partnership with this industry and they will step up and do even more. Uh, but they'll do, uh, they'll do less work, but they'll, but they'll do even more in terms of making a contribution to their workplaces being as safe as possible. Uh, the alternative, of course, is to have mass food shortages. Uh, and I think we have to try and avoid that wherever we can. I just go back to the central point. You Mass may not be able to buy every so single item that you want. So who's a crazy prepper in the media now? Remember when they were telling everyone an idiot? Now it doesn't sound like it, does it? There'll be more to go around if people buy what they need when they need it, rather than going and buying four trolleys worth of groceries uh, and uh, enough uh, chicken or beef. Uh, vegans can't rule. They're too weak and anemic and they're, they're all depressed. That's not necessary. That is simply not necessary. Uh, and that's why I think you'll find uh, that a number of our supermarkets will add to some of the restrictions they've already put in place, and I fully support them doing that. Carnivores won't re rest in peace. We'll just eat animals, eat pets. Well, uh, I'll leave the national economic analysis to others. In terms of the Victorian economy, I would see it as uh, not just a six-week issue. I'd see this as the entire, the entire uh, impact of this pandemic, which is now months old, will take us years to uh, recover from. There's simply no doubt about that. And that's why a clear plan to rebuild, to recover with strength, uh, a clear plan around skills and jobs will be absolutely uh, essential. Uh, and we've already begun the hard yeah, work. Yeah, I'm a veganist. Of, of I like that. that's that plan good. up. Uh, and we will waste <laughs> no time uh, delivering it and delivering it in full. How are you going to ensure that businesses are doing the right thing? Are there going to be police door knocks, work safe inspectors? I'll have some more to say about an increased, uh, very PSRs significant will enhancements be to our door knocking marching effort, through particularly police for stations. positive cases uh, and close meatworks. contacts. Finding you for not wearing your mask. As well about compliance in a broader sense, and I'll have some announcements tomorrow about uh, this is penalties. Australia, guys. Uh, where people Welcome are Australia. just, you know, totally unacceptable behaviour, doing the wrong thing. Uh, it isn't good enough for us just to get angry. Uh, we need to take steps and we need to send very, very strong Rusty. messages. We have been, but we're going to go a step further. But I'll have more about more to say about that uh, tomorrow. I think you're aware there's already been a lag on um, the payments going out, payments that you um, you promised to businesses first time around, and now you're obviously offering Wait, more. Wait, they can't even keep up, up with their bloody hand out. They're bribes. There are well. literally tens of thousands You'd of hate to be in a situation here where your business is kind of screwed. Paid out. Uh, I think if memory serves, and I'm, I'll be happy to uh, give you the exact figure later on, but I think we're in the order of eight, nine hundred million dollars the first time round. Uh, many, many thousands of tens of thousands of businesses. Uh, uh, any system will always struggle to pay out that much money to that many different applications. There'll always be some time involved, but of course we're looking at looking at our systems across the board and where we can make any improvements. Of course, uh, of course, James, we will. I just have a question for Brett. Sure. Um, what will the curfew stop from happening? Is that about trying to stop parties and family gatherings? Yeah, presumably it was it was part of the state of disaster announcements, and uh, you know it was with a view on um, police being able to see the movement of people after 
uh, that 8 p.m. time. So clearly they're able to focus on a smaller number of people uh, and they can uh, have greater oversight and compliance and enforcement um, for those who are seen to be out after 8 p.m. Uh, and so they'll be able to really um, dig down into the essential uh, reasons that people will need to be out of home. Uh, and it'll crack down on those individuals who are moving for non-essential reasons, who might be visiting other homes, who might be visiting other people uh, for non-essential reasons. And, and those non-essential visits are exactly the interactions that are contributing to transmission in Victoria. Brent, we, how long, how many weeks should it we, should take before we start seeing the effects of this? Yeah, I think um, over the next 10 to 14 days, we should see the effects of uh, these restrictions um, uh, show in the numbers. As I say, there might be some effects on the mask wearing that has already been in place for some time uh, that we'll see in the coming week. Uh, but the, the real uh, uh, driving down of transmission from these restrictions uh, happen a week to two weeks after uh, they're implemented. So. Um, you know, curfew, uh, Wednesday nights uh, uh, restrictions, and then Friday nights uh, all showing up uh, seven to 14 days afterwards. Parents with young children are now often being faced with the choice between exercising themselves or going out with fresh air for the, um, with their kids to get some fresh air. Are you concerned that there might be some unintended mental health and physical health consequences from that? And would you consider making an exemption for parents with young kids? So um, parents can go. So out glad with I got a house with a yard uh, for, for the purpose of um, uh, exercise. If if there's no other option of um, having those kids at home, but there's no escaping the, Thanks for the subscribing, impact on people's um, uh, mental health and uh, you know the psychological challenge of what a lockdown means. Uh, that's why there will be further announcements, as the Premier has intimated, um, in relation to that support. But, it, you know, these are inescapable realities. We have to limit our interaction with other people in order to stop transmission. Uh, and that has an effect on, on you know, what amounts to um, human needs. Uh, we all struggle not to see our extended family members, not to see... Uh, some other uh, friends and, and supports that would normally be available to us. Uh, that, that's an inescapable uh, and really difficult. You reckon I won't even be able to go in my own yard? To strike a balance Shit. here. Then I, then uh, I can't walk to here. Hang on, I've got to, to keep knocking. Um, you know, allow people to have yes. the interactions that are, are necessary to support them. Given we've got almost six and a half thousand active cases now, is it realistic that in six weeks' time we'll have a negligible number? Um, I think in terms of new cases emerging, we, we can drive those numbers down very substantially. There will be a lag uh, in terms of active cases uh, because people obviously um, uh, can be infectious you know, for 10 days. Um, but there is, um, there is you know, real confidence, and it's not just my view. This uh, is Aussie, that Westpac from um, not accepting team, cash, uh, that, that was for non-Westpac non customers, mate. You know, it's not for everyone. Um, Committee of Chief I, I don't know why you deposit bank at a this money at a bank Victoria. that you, you're not a customer uh, of. So, yeah, uh, and I think it's being blown out of proportion. Um, but to your point, I think we can drive down to a point where we've got very minimal new cases. Liam's right. Um, it's going to suck. There will be, you know, feel sorry for people. Thousands of active Bloody cases. Heartbreaking, really. That period of time that will come down. And then, and then, you probably wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't even get job seeker because you probably have too much cash. Who, who might be, um, they want you to liquefy everything uh, you have. In hospital for a matter of weeks. So, you know, those active cases will persist for some time, but it's the new cases that we'll be watching on a day-to-day -day basis. The mystery cases jumped dramatically. Um, was that just a, a, a question of you have to have to rule a line under a lot of them that you investigated and that was it? Yeah, that's right. So the, the mystery cases get finally classified as mystery when you've looked into every possible uh, potential acquisition for those cases. So when you've determined that um, they're not linked to any existing outbreak, any existing cluster, that they don't have a link to any existing um, active case, uh, confirmed coronavirus case, then you can determine that it's a, a mystery case or a community transmission case. So it is part of closing off that investigation. Has the app actually proven useful in solving any of those mystery cases? Um, so, the, so the app essentially will rule out a mystery case if it can identify um, a, a contact who's already um, flagged as positive. But the real um, benefit of the app 
is when you're <coughs> confirmed as a positive case and all of your close contacts that you haven't been able to name uh, get get flagged through that app. So has it actually proven any, have you actually been able to identify anyone? As, as I've said before, um, we're, we're in a setting in Victoria where the policies are that you're not going to be in a pub with several other people. You're not going to be in a setting where there are dozens of people around you who aren't familiar to you. We've got policy settings where almost everyone that you're going to be in close contact with, you can identify as a close contact in the workplace, in your home uh, or going out for essential reasons. So. Um, now in Victoria is not a time where the app comes into its um, best use, uh, but we've seen in New South Wales that it uh, has had a significant effect because they've got policy settings where people uh, um, are becoming positive cases, uh, where there are a number of people around them who they can't name and, and who don't normally know. So the, so the app is most useful in those um, circumstances. And for that reason, uh, I'd encourage people to have it because we'll get to a point where we're opening up where we'll be mixing with a, a great number of people again. Uh, um, and if Michael's there are asking, uh, first cases, lockdown over uh, there. We'll want um, that app to be able to identify their close contacts. Uh, uh, well, no, this is a more restrict lockdown in Victoria. A very restrict lockdown in Victoria. We've had them before, um, but this is much worse. Uh, a significant Shazra, Shazor. Uh, um, a Take care. Step up from stage Take care. Two. I want to go through all uh, the detail lists a bit later. Thanks for watching. Everyone doing the right thing to drive numbers down. There aren't there aren't really many other settings that you can go to, uh, but we've seen it work across the world. Uh, we know it's more challenging in a second wave, uh, but we've seen it work and it will work. Um, Could we have done this earlier, button. Brett? I think in retrospect, it's always um, it's always difficult to know, you know, when you hit the button on an intervention like this, especially with such significant impacts. Uh, but with the wisdom of hindsight, uh, it would be great to know that uh, um, uh, the trajectory that we were on uh, was always going to go the way that it was going to go. Um, I, you know, I wish uh, that we'd never gotten to a point where we needed to intervene in this way. And so a lot of the decision making was around trying to see the effective interventions. But you never know. What about the third exactly wave? Yeah, that's the question I have work, too, Earl. Uh, when you bring them into play. It's the question I have too. And so it's a really it's a really tricky space to make decisions in. Uh, and you're trying to avoid the harms of uh, exactly what we're doing now. Uh, but you're balancing that with the need to, to drive transmission down. Um, Professor Sutton, the MEEP release does flag a stage five. It says it's hard to imagine what a stage five might look like, but it would radically change stage the way people five. live. Are you able to elaborate or tell us a bit more about no, that? We're not thinking about a stage five. We are thinking about a successful stage four. We know it can work, uh, but it What's does require, this is what talking about a stage five is. It does require everyone's cooperation. Uh, because Why be was it mentioned? Well, well, what it could a stage five be? It's saying that uh, the alternative uh, is inconceivable. We need everyone to do what's required now. What's happening uh, in Sweden? In order to get to where we want to be. How many clinical contact traces do you have on every day? This is Victoria. Well, they legalise euthanasia and kill uh, people at their own will. Why are they going crazy are, over this? Uh, uh, talking to them about uh, what quarantine requires of them and who are checking in to make sure that they haven't developed symptoms. Don't leave your uh, bedroom. Uh, need a prompt to get tested. Premier, um, yes. there's, you've mentioned a couple of times shared responsibility with the federal government when it comes to the finances of this. It's been some... Um, commentary speculation that you might match them dollar for dollar on the compensation aspects of what's required here, is that correct? Uh, no, uh, what I'd say to you is uh, each and every thing that we do, each and every decision that we make and announcement that we make uh, should be looked at on its merits. I've had some discussions Sorry, Horizon. with the Commonwealth I know Government Melbourne's a special that case. about a shared approach but you let them uh, get in that relation way. to insecure work. Uh, it won't necessarily be dollar for dollar, uh, but there are some cohorts of people, some groups of people that are not covered under various federal government arrangements. We have covered them and we will continue to. So uh, I, I, would, I would hope that no one, no one should read into that, uh, that we are anything other than unified and working together. We absolutely are. I've had, I'm not quite sure how many conversations I've had with the Prime Minister over the last three or four days, lots. Uh, and they've all been productive. They're all about outcomes. Uh, and uh, I'm very grateful for his support uh, and very grateful for the practical way in which he approaches this. We've all just got to get the job done. 
Uh, that's my approach, always has been, and I'm very pleased to be joined in that by the uh, PM. And just something else that arose out of yesterday, sure. specific to childcare and the finances of childcare. I know that's yes. the Commonwealth as well, but um, are you aware of any plans so that parents won't have to keep paying to keep the child's yeah. place? And what about the workers? It's, it's, uh, it is a very significant issue, and as you rightly point out, that's not one that's, uh, that I can make announcements about, but the Prime Minister... He thinks the economy uh, will never Minister recover. Tien, I think in some comments he made yesterday, uh, there is an acknowledgement, uh, and I suppose in many respects it's not just about attitude or... or uh, or any comments that are made now, uh, the, the, the uh, runs are on the board, if you like, in that there was a direct intervention by the Commonwealth Government to support this sector. Uh, and uh, I know there are lots of different discussions going on about that, but they're not matters for me to announce. Uh, they're, they're indeed a, mat a matter for the Federal Government. Can, can babysitting go ahead? Can people have babysitters around to the house or, or grandparents or aunties, uncles, babysit their kids? I think you, want it, you need to have the minimum number of people coming to your house under any circumstances, under any circumstances. That is the most, of, of the, uh, Brett can speak to this, uh, but you've just, in, in, every, in every way, you've got to be limiting the number of people that come to your home and you should ideally have no one coming to your home. No, of course, but if you're an essential worker and you need to yeah. go to work and, and you don't want to... Well, childcare will be, well, childcare will... If you don't want to take your child to childcare, for example, if you don't well, feel it's a safe setting for your child. Okay, I'll, I'll let Brett speak to that. The, these are being written up in the um, legal directions uh, as we speak, but the, the intent is yes, for, for those who haven't got an option perhaps for uh, formal childcare, that uh, if they need care at their home, uh, because they're essential workers and they need to be uh, at that workplace, then that'll be available to them. And will there be a list of essential workers, it may be in the documents we've got, but will there be a list of you know, what's classified as essential workers? Yeah, uh, what we will, sorry, someone almost asked this before, or they did and I didn't answer it. Uh, let, let me just make the point. Uh, we'll have some more announcements to make this week about a uh, permit system. <laughs> yeah, I think they'll re-elect him too. paper that says I am, this is, who, this is where I work, this is what I do, so that for the purposes of enforcement, curfew, all of those things, uh, we don't want to be putting people into that really challenging situation where they have to explain themselves even though they don't really, don't really need to. Uh, but uh, that, that's going to be a, a simple common sense process and we'll have more to say about that soon. Uh, as it is now, uh, the curfew obviously does apply, 8pm to 5am every day. So uh, the PSO is marching care, up your suburban street or going check. to and from work or being at work. They're the only reasons to be out. Police will be stopping you. They will be asking those questions. I'll do it respectfully. And they'll be, they'll be very fair in these early days in that they'll probably err on the side of, you know, it is early. But the time will come when that gets turned off and anyone who wants to play papers have a please reason will get will get fined uh, papers, in terms of permits and, and, and that broader issue I'll, I'll have more to say about that soon how did the curfew go last night did you hear papers. from police my reports oh, I mean, uh, were very early on this morning so i haven't got a full breakdown but i'd leave it to victoria police to update you on that i've uh, i must i will confess that i've been uh, a bit tied up on other things but uh the curfew's there it's there for a reason it's there to protect all of us and you know you just can't be going out has anyone read the Gulag Archipelago, place. guys? Oh, no one will know. I won't get caught. Maybe it's something to caught. read with you you six weeks caught. lockdown, because eh? What you're doing is you are contributing to the spreading of this virus, and you're meaning that everyone else stays in lockdown for longer than they should. Those choices have got to stop. That activity has got to stop. And Victoria Police, as I've said a few times now, and the fine data backs me up, they are not What's this? mucking about. Big lockdown in stage three in the UK, to so they're doing it to too. Bloody hell. Hospitals now have active outbreaks among healthcare workers. I need to come back to you in terms of individual settings, but obviously we have uh, in no, total have a kind numbers, of <laughs> we have, I'm not sure if I went to this before, but we have uh, 1,089 uh, active cases that have got a connection to aged care, and we've got about 706 active Have you all heard about some of the horrific a little bit treatment of that. elderly in the aged issue. care? It's terrible. And again, I know I've made this point a few times, and well, obviously we're happy to answer any other questions you have, but if we were to end on this point, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be the worst place to end. Uh, Let's be clear, our, our health workers put themselves in harm's way every minute of every shift in every setting. If you value them, if you respect them, if you honour them, then don't do anything. How is it a gulag or a dictatorship? Instead, you need to have the right papers to sure walk up the street. Patients. You can't go out of your house at 8pm. Are you serious, mate? Make sure that there's less Come on. opportunity for those health workers to become sick. I, I guess you like just you know, to the sick. being you know, ruled this over. This is a, a really simple yeah. thing, uh, but to avoid cool. fine. To get this Each their own, eh? than it would otherwise be, to support our health workers, 
to keep yourself and your family and every family safe. You've got to follow the rules, you've got to do the right thing. And just because, for instance, babysitters might be allowed in very certain circumstances, that's not an invitation to do that. Uh, the fact that there's an hour's exercise and there's an hour's shopping a day, or sorry, there's an hour's exercise and there's an opportunity to go shopping each day, doesn't mean you should go shopping each day, every single day. You should be out doing what you need to do when you need well, to. Well, no, it's not that it spreads uh, more after 8 p.m. It's probably because people are on the piss and they don't give a shit. That, honestly, that, that would be the reason. The when you're drunk, you just say, oh, fuck it. Come on. We, we all know but that, in, guys. In total, in there probably is a greater really risk of it spreading at that time. Uh, at the same time, as stern as we sometimes have to be, as frank and uh, as absolutely direct as we have to be, I wouldn't want only only dob them in if you get paid by a minority you know? to detract from the amazing work that so many Victorians, a vast majority of Victorians, are doing. I'm deeply grateful to each and every one of you. I'm proud of you. We will get through this. We'll get through it if we stick together. We'll get through it if we follow the rules. We'll get through it if we make the tough calls when they need to be made. And that's what I've done yesterday. That's what I've done today. It's what I've tried to do all the way through this. But me and my team, it's thousands big, thousands of people. But we can't do this on our own. We need every Victorian to play their part. And that's why I'm so grateful to all of those who are. Any other issues? Can, sorry, can I just ask, can Melbourne workers continue to travel to regional Victoria to work? If you are working in a permitted industry, then yes. And the reason for that, if I was to, this is something we did give quite a bit of thought to. If I was to say, no, you can't, then what I'll finish up with is nurses, for instance, uh, who travel a bit north to go and work at a hospital. You'd also finish up with vi vice versa, people that wouldn't be coming to Melbourne. We've already seen, for instance, because the border with New South Wales is closed, a number of hospitals in the northeast of Victoria uh, where staff are living, live on, on the border, so just into New South Wales. Uh, we don't want to see the same sort of impacts uh, happening on that border between regional Victoria and uh, Metro Melbourne. However, however, regardless of the setting, regardless of the job you do, no one can go to work if you've got even the mildest of symptoms. Uh, and you, and I, I would appeal to anyone in Melbourne. I mean, that who that's true. If people are sick that's and right they're going to work. That's back, just insane. Who needs to go to work and they're doing very important work. But the last thing you want to be doing is taking this virus to work with you into regional Victoria. So any symptoms whatsoever, the only thing to do is to get tested and then to wait until you get the results of those tests. Premier, sorry, I asked Brett Sutton sure. about stage five. I'd just like to hear what you have to say about it as well. It says that these rules uh, won't just be about when and where you can go shopping, but restrictions on going shopping at all. Can you understand how that could be quite scary for Victorians to hear and that that would then encourage them to panic by? And what do you mean by that? No, I don't think so. I think I couldn't have been clearer today. I couldn't have been clearer yesterday that shopping centres remain open. Uh, and you don't need to go and buy six months' worth of groceries, and I'd ask people not to do that. Uh, we've made some changes in a number of different uh, parts of the food industry, uh, but they've been carefully calibrated. And again, you won't necessarily be able to buy ev everything that you might normally buy. Uh, you'll get pretty, pretty close. Quantities might be different. You might not be able to go and buy quite uh, as much as you would normally buy, but we've worked very closely with, in with industry to try and find that sweet spot where there's still everything we need, not necessarily everything we want. It is for a six week period, it's not, it's not six months. Uh, so I'd ask people just to work with us on that. And I know that all of our retail workers, all those supermarket workers, people working in uh, dis distribution centres, cool stores, all of them, they're doing an amazing job to keep as much stock on the shelves as they possibly can. We don't make their job any easier if we go and buy six months worth Dark, of supplies. Dark, mate, I think you need to stop with the Bitcoin. The reason stage five <laughs> I think you need to stop, is that mate. there is no stage five. It's not doing any good. Otherwise, we will have to devise a set, a set of rules that will even further limit people's movement. Uh, stage I don't five. want to get to a situation uh, where we've got to take those steps. And that's not about, you know, you can be polite and not talk about those matters, but that's not the way that I operate. I'm being frank. I'm being direct. I'm making it clear to people. We all have to follow these rules. We all have to accept that this is the reality that we are now confronted by. We've got to make this work because it's at best uncertain what the next steps would be. So that's this is where we're going. Twin has ourselves. a point.
and we've all got to focus on getting to the other side and all of us can make contributions large and small but be in no doubt all of us must make that contribution and that's why Victoria Police will be out there in force uh, and they the day the time for warnings the time for you know cutting people slack if you're if you've had a test you need to be at home waiting for the result if you've been if you've tested positive you've got to be at home if you're a close contact you've got to be at home uh, the curfew is there for a reason needs to be followed needs to be followed and if you think that it's a smart thing to test police to, to try your luck visiting a mate well we'll wait and see how what the what the odds on that are because victoria police uh, and the ADF yes, skip and raises are a good there, point and i'll I try and say bring it up penalties here. And more to say about enforcement tomorrow. It? Again, please, no you one know, who's doing the did, right did we build any emergency as hospitals as or shelters? Did we deploy any modular deeply, deeply facilities grateful. to provide additional I ICU people, capacity? Has, has any of that occurred? Guys, let, let me know in the comments if, the right if you've seen that happening. ...are becoming, like me, increasingly frustrated with people who aren't. And that's why we ask you to make the right choice, to make better choices, and frankly, given the odds of getting caught, make smarter choices. Uh, I'll have more to say about those issues uh, tomorrow. Are there any other matters? Just one, sorry. Certainly. I shouldn't have said if they were a good, good place to end, should I? <laughs> the Assembly's not sitting tomorrow. Do you know if the Council will be sitting? I'm not sure. Uh, you've heard me so many times that I wouldn't seek to interpret the, uh, the many the many riddles of that place that, that that's that's a matter for them but the chief of mario i can't unhide your comment that's just uh, too want, your stage six to suggestions to contribute to the spread of this <laughs> and particularly given uh when it comes to regional mps for instance coming to melbourne there's not that kind of freedom of movement that uh that was that was a feature earlier but that's entirely a matter for the legislative council thanks very much guys see you tomorrow thank you Hello and welcome to Afternoon Briefing here on ABC News. So there we have it, guys. There we have it. Now, I thought what we'll do is we'll go through... We'll go through this document that's been released because it seems to be lining up with everything that we... Well, that we just heard. That we just heard. These are the Stage 4 restrictions, so in a little bit greater detail. Let's have a look. Um, agricultural, forestry and fishing. Closed for on-site work of forestry and logging and recreational fishing. It's all closed. Open. Agriculture, farm, animal, uh, bloodstock leasing, aquaculture, fishing, other agricultural and fishing support services, forestry activity, production of firewood for heating of premises, production of pallets, supermarket and grocery stores. Examples of exemptions. Food production is exempt. So mining. Exploration and other mining support services are closed. They're closed. Coal mining is open. Oil and gas extraction is open. Metal ore mining is open. Non-metallic mineral mining and quarrying petroleum production. So resources operating include critical minerals, metals, LNG, coal and iron ore cannot be shut down without significant safety concerns and operations. So there you go. Uh, Jared is pissed that he can't fish anymore. <laughs> You're right. You're right. We'll, we'll find out about your chop shop, mate. We'll find out about, about your chop shop. What will be what I'm actually interested in? Are the bullion shops going to be open, guys? Are the bullion shops going to be open? Wait, I've lost my mouse. Manufacturing. So wood production, product manufacturing, basic chemical manufacturing, basic polymer manufacturing, other basic chemical production, polymer um, product and rubber manufacturing, food production and manufacturing is open. Meat and meat products, seafood, dairy, manufacturing fruit and vegetables. What else is closed? Non-metallic mineral manufacturing, primary metal and metal production manufacturing. So pretty much the entire manufacturing industry except for food. Medical PPE is open, petroleum, coal, basic chemicals, pharmaceuticals, sanitary product, tenant communications, microelectronics and semiconductor products. Heating and cooling, household paper products, good goods and material necess necessary for or relevant to support defense or security industries manufacturing to support residential building industry if not closed the supply chain pulp paper and converted paper products manufacturing printing and support services are open fertilizer and pesticide manufacturing cleaning compound and toiletry preparation manufacturing glass and glass production manufacturing computer and electronic equipment manufacturing is there much in Victoria Heating and ventilation manufacturing, specialist machinery and equipment. 
So electric, gas, water, and waste services, there are no closures. They're all open. Electricity services, gas, water supply, sewage, drainage services, waste and resource recovery services, including collection, treatment, and disposal, liquid fuels, and refinery services are open. Construction. So residential building construction yet to commence. Non-residential building, including retail construction, non-critical. Heavy and civil construction, non-critical and construction services are all closed for on-site work. So what's ongoing is the residential building work that has commenced, construction of critical strategic infrastructure, construction of infrastructure connected to essential services. Silver Bull is telling us that glass is a big big employer in Victoria. Okay. Well, actually, yeah, I should know that. I've dealt with some glass suppliers and all came from Victoria. Consideration of residential building construction manufacturing as a collective. So wholesale trade. Motor vehicle and motor vehicle parts wholesaling is closed for on-site work. Furniture, floor covering and other goods wholesaling. Commission-based wholesaling is closed. Open for on-site works. Groceries, liquor and tobacco. Food production, manufacturing, cereal, grain, wholesaling. So retail trade. Let's see who's going to take the hit in retail. So we've got motor vehicle, motor vehicle parts retailing. Specialized food retailing, including fresh meat. Why is that closed? Fish and poultry retailing, fruit and vegetable retailing. Why, why is that closed? Isn't that what, what people need? Isn't that food? So is it going to be just the big boys can remain open and all the little specialist boutique food providers are copping it? Could that be it? Michael is saying bullion deals are closed in the UK. Furniture, floor coverings, housewares, and textile goods retailing is closed. And I'll turn off this. Electrical and electronic goods retailing is closed. Hardware, building, and gardening supplies retailing, except where spe specified as permitted to operate. So there's going to... I bet you that this is going to... This is going to destroy a lot of small businesses here. Truth Oz is saying middle class destroyed. Middle class destroyed. There's a bit of a delay between when it comes up here on the screen and when I see it here. Uh, and he's right. Get the I suspect they're going to cop it, guys. They're going to cop it. Recreational goods retailing, including sex shops. There goes the hope. There goes the hope of that baby boom, guys. The sex shops are closed. So Rolf needs his bunnings. <laughs> yeah, well, mate. Sorry. Clothing, footwear, uh, you can still go to Bunnings, but I think, you know, no con non contact. Clothing, footwear, and personal accessories, but it has to be within five kilometers of your house. Clothing, footwear, and personal accessory retailing, department stores, stationary good retailing, antique and used goods retailing, flower retailing, other store based retailing, pretty much everything in retail, non store retailing, and retail commission based buying and or selling. Everything is closed. Food courts and auction houses. But I bet your real estate, accommodation, except where specified is permitted to operate, pubs, taverns and bars, clubs and nightclubs. Okay, what is open for site work? Supermarkets and grocery stores, bottle stores, fuel retailing, pharmacies, post offices, hardware building, garden supplies, retailing, where, um, where supplying permitted services or industry, agricultural retailers, drive through only, retail work on site of the proposed purpose of filling online orders. Accommodation where providing a permanent or temporary place of residency, emergency accommodation for work purposes and for people subject to direction and attention notices and for diagnosed persons and close contact. Boarding schools, residential colleges and university accommodation services, cafes and restaurants, takeaway food service only. Takeaway food service only. Let's have a look. Transport, postal and warehousing. Scenic and sightseeing transport is closed is closed. So we've got open for on-site work, road transportation, rail transportation, water transportation, air, pipeline, transportation, warehousing and storage, postal and courier pickup, delivery services, so no surprises there, freight, public and private transport by any methods including this, vehicle repair, towing, any ancillary activities. So information, information, media and telecommunications. So what's closed? Book publishing. Oh, we can't have books. 
We can't have books. Oh, they'll burn them anyway in Victoria, won't they? They'll, they'll ban them. They'll get them removed from public libraries. That's what Victoria is like. Directory and mailing list publishing, other publishing, software. Why is software publishing closed? I guess you're just going to have to work from home. Work from home. This is going to have a huge impact on b these businesses. If you adapt to this method of working, you can cut your cost, guys. So what's open for site? Telecommunications, newspaper and magazine publishing, radio broadcasting, television broadcasting. Sorry, motion picture and sound recording are closed. Library and other services. What's open? Internet publishing and broadcasting. Internet service provi for providers. Okay. Financial and insurance services. Jared's asking what happens to learn to code. Well, mate, you can learn to code from home. Don't worry. You can learn to code from home. Non-depository financing. Fi uh, financial assisted investing. Insurance and superannuation funds. Auxiliary financial insurance services. What's open? Retail banking. The banks are okay, guys. It's all good. The banks are okay. The banks are okay. Provision of banking services to support those on... Okay, I've read that. So, retail hiring and real estate services. Ah, rental hiring and real estate services. What's going to happen? Rental and hiring services, except where spe specified as permitted to operate. Property operators and real estate services. So, real estate services aren't allowed to work on site then. Are they still going to do the real estate tours? Are they still going to do the walkthroughs? Rental and hiring services where supplying per permitted services or industries, farm animal and bloodstock leasing. Here we go. Professional and scientific technical services closed for on-site work. Architectural, engineering and technical services. There you go. Architects, engineers, you're all closed. You all have to work from home. This is the thing I, I can tell you now. If you can adapt to working from home without having to pay for a fancy office, I wonder how many people are going to do it. Legal and accounting services, advertising services, market research and statistical services, management and related consulting services, professional photographic services, other professional scientific and technical services, computer system design and related services, scientific research services are allowed to be open. I wonder why. Rolf, all architects have shut down. Yep, mate. Well, their offices have shut down. They're all working from home. They're all working from home, you know. Which you'd be doing anyway, to be honest. Administration and support services. So employment services are shut down. Travel agency and tour arrangement services are shut down. Off administration services are shut down. Document preparation services are shut down. Credit reporting and debt collection are shut down. Call centers are shut down. Oh, well, that, that's a good one. <laughs> and other administrative services. So what remained, remains open? Building, cleaning, pest and other services. So, public administration and safety, nothing closed. Public administration, exemption for essential services that cannot be undertaken, Medicare, justice services, judges, the legal system to the extent necessary to support functioning of the court, tribunal and dispute services mentioned above, public prosecution, defense lawyers, DJS office, uh, facilities and services for people in existing custody and defense. Public order, safety and regular, oh, of course, you know, there you go. Education and training. Okay, what's closed for on-site? Preschool education, primary, secondary, and, and special school education, tertiary education, adult community, and other education. What's open? Preschool for children of essential workers and vulnerable children, primary, secondary, and special school education for children of essential workers and vulnerable children. Okay, health care and social assistance. Elective surgery is now closed. Um, Gris is asking, or G1598 is asking, what's wrong with the vegan diet? Uh, mate, have a look at low carb down under. This, it's uh, severely lacking in nutrients and every and so many people need to take supplements to make it work. It's not natural. No civilization has ever done it throughout any part of history. You know, And all, all the seed oils that people eat, they're complete garbage. Look at how they're actually manufactured. It's, it's, it's not healthy. Anyway, back to this. Enough of my vegan bashing. That's not the point of this. You know, if you got, if you can only grow vegetables, you eat them. You know, you keep going. So government and non-governmental entities that provide welfare and social services to meet immediate needs, hospitals, ambulances, primary care, IVF production, laboratory, 
aged care, yep, allied health, residential care, funerals, arts and recreation, what's closed, museums, parks, creative performing arts, sports, gambling, See, gambling, this is why everyone's jumping into the share trading, guys. This is why everyone's jumping into the share trading. You know? Other services. Other services. What's closed? Personal care services. Photography. Film processing. Photography, film processing, that still exists? Parking services. Brothel, keeping and prostitution services. Sex on premises. Venues. There you go. Brothels are closed, guys. Sorry, all you Victorians. You're right, no sex for you. Strip clubs are closed. They'll just move all online, won't they? Uh, civic, professional, and other in, in, interest group services. Religious services and places of worship. Why are religious services next to brothels and strip clubs? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it is Victoria, isn't it? It is Victoria. You, at least, you know, you can't go to the strip club or you can't go to church. You know? What's open? Laundry and dry cleaning services, residential repair and maintenance, motor vehicle, machinery, and veterinarian services. So, there we have it, guys. There we have it. So, we had a look at the, well, the property hit. We had a look at all of the businesses that were cut. What do you all think, everyone? What do you all think? Do you have any questions or anything you want to talk about? While I'm here, I mean, that's it. People are all talking about the hyd uh, hydroxychloroquine. We all saw that footage from Breitberg, didn't you? Or Breitbart? Breitbart from all the doctors, you know. There you go. Honestly, I would just, I just think the dialogue, ne the discussion now needs to be on elements of comorbidity and how you can manage them. I think that should be the discussion. There's, it's never any mention of that. Okay, while you're locked down, you know, work on your weight, you fat bastards. Lose your weight. Here's a strategy to do it. You know, here's a way to do this. Uh, Nicole is asking what page I was reading from. This is actually a, um, ooh, hang on. This was a document that someone sent to me. It's an attachment of stage 4B restrictions. It was the media release. And if I delete this here, it's actually a protected cabinet in confidence document. So, yeah. Well, guys, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, I thought I'd just quickly throw this, this video, this live stream together now because, uh, you know, they were going to announce it and I'd gotten this document. So, you know, just to share it all. I mean, it's going crazy. There's a lot of lockdowns. Victoria, the economy is definitely going to get hit. And we'll have to wait and see for these. These um, We'll have to wait and see for the property spruker saying how this is going to be good for property in Melbourne. <laughs> I'm just waiting for this. I've got another video that I'm planning to release tonight, guys. This is a, another quite a long one. Um, that I recorded earlier today. It's about uh, workers striking for 16% pay rises. And I look at all sides of the arguments, guys. You know, okay, I look at the, the, the more right-leaning sides and I look at the more left-leaning sides so to present a clear picture. I'd like you all to join me for that one and let me know what you think. You know, do they deserve 16% rise, pay rise in one year right now? You know? So, guys, thanks for, um, thanks for watching. And I need to go have a rum, <laughs> I think. And we'll have to see how Victoria goes. My biggest concern is that this is going to spread uh, in other states because, I mean, you can't control a virus. You can do what you can to mitigate it. I thought the whole, imp the whole purpose of reducing the curve was to allow us to prepare for when it, it shot up. That, that's what I anticipated. I mean, one thing you can look at, you can look at the, well, the demographics around the different suburbs in Victoria where they were, were born and the infection outreach there's some people that just frankly they, they, don't, they don't even have the the english skills guys to understand what's going on maybe they have to lock them all down we'll have to see we'll have to see guys so 
Thanks for watching. And I'm going to go get a beer and we'll have a look at that other video. I'll release it probably at six o'clock. So come back for that. And people are saying that was a lie. That was a lie, mass bankruptcies. I mean, it's it's nuts right now. <laughs> if you just think about this, actually, before I go, just think about this. If we had have said this in a, a year ago, if someone had to mention this, they would have called you a bloody nutcase, a bloody nutcase. You know, never going to happen in Australia. Never going to happen. You're crazy. Um, no, mate, veganism hasn't been proven. Low carb, high fat has. It's the best way to lose weight. Average vegans cut out about five years time. It's not for long term. Go look it up. Look up low carb down under. Look up the lectures there. Then this is not some, you know, douchey guy selling a meal plan. These are professional doctors that are curing diabetes, that are curing heart disease, that are really helping people. You know, to hell with listening to idiots on YouTube. Go listen to professionals on YouTube. Because uh, honestly, the the whole diet thing, that was the one. That was part of my questioning the information that authority has given to us, looking at heterodox opinions, alternative opinions, you know? So look at that, because meat will save your life. Anyway, guys, take care. I'll see you next time. And uh, join me for the next video later today. I'm going to go and get myself a rum and coke. Oh, and uh, I should probably do the outro. Thanks for watching. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. Share the video around. If you want to support us, there are a few ways you can. You can do it on YouTube or Patreon. Thank you to everyone who's supporting the channel, and thank you to everyone who's subscribed and helped us reach 15,000 viewers. I really appreciate it. It's just growing. You know, a little hobby that's doing, that I'm enjoying. Keeps me out of trouble. We can also, um, if you want to support us, you can use our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin. I notice some people are buying DVDs and videos on Amazon. Other people are doing stuff on eBay, and it, every little bit helps, guys. We also have merch from Heiser Says. You can see the pocket squares behind me just hanging off the bow. I guess it could be used as a, as a face mask. I mean, you know, if you want to. I was, I was thinking of making... Oh, I was going to make some really um, inappropriate ones, but we'll have, you know, just to, as jokes to wear, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see. I don't think I can be bothered. And finally, you can support us by simply sharing the content or using PayPal. Thanks, guys. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. That shouldn't be streaming. <laughs>